let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to sit into the middle aisle if that's okay. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing this morning? It is good to, to come together to praise God, to pray. And I, I just, um, the other day I was reading the word of God and I went to the book of Psalm. And the book of Psalm, which is one of my favorite areas of the word of God, just hearing David share what's on his heart, songs and so forth. And it was just beautiful. But I, I just want to read, if I could get to it, just one second. Psalms 1. Or oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do, but not the wicked. They are like worthless shaft scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Aren't you glad this morning that you serve a true and living God who says, follow him and he'll show you rest lean out on your own understanding in all that ways acknowledge him for he shall direct your path the path can get a little rocky at times the path coming to church this morning might have been rocky but you made it the path in life will never be sort of an easy journey you're going to have things along the way that's going to try to take you out but I, I like to look at God as sort of a, those pulling guards those tackles clearing the way for you to walk. And so he has to clear the way and get the noise off that path so that you can go where you need to go. And when I hear Jesus say, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, nobody gets to the Father but through me. I think about the path. He is the way. He cleared the path. All we got to do is follow him. Follow him and he will take care of you. His ways will take care of you. His life will take care of you. So this morning, for those of you who are here and those of you online, there should be a praise report in your heart. The enemy tried to kill you. But God says, I've come to give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. So can I get just a hallelujah shout of praise this morning, a hand clap about the goodness of God in our lives. And so as we get ready to go into to the praise part of our worship service, I want you to turn your attention to the screen. Good morning, good morning. We like to keep this worship going this morning because we know that when God is in the midst, mm, so I just ask you all to...
You know, I stayed in worship about half of my day yesterday because, you know, God just had me there. So this next song that I'm going to sing, it, it pushes us straight through to prayer because we want him here. We want him where we are. Wherever you are, you can make that your sanctuary. So we're just asking him to come in the midst in the sanctuary here. So y'all praise with us today and give God your all. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have.
welcome your presence, God. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Someone may think that we've ended worship, but we're still going to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. You see, when the woman who had a terrible reputation came into the place where Jesus and the disciples were, and she loved Jesus so much that she wanted to give him what she had. And so she had something that represented her life. It represented the work that she had done. Regardless of what that work was, it represented the work that she had done. And so she came with an alabaster box before the Lord. And she took the box and she broke open the box and she poured out the oil upon Jesus' feet and she cried tears and, and, and she wiped his feet and she anointed his feet and she wiped his feet. Oh my God. She took of her substance and she worshiped God for who he was to her. And so on today, in like manner, we're going to continue to worship God. We're going to worship him. We're going to bring to him the fruit of our labor on today. Solomon said that we should cast our bread up on the water and after not many days, it will return to us. So this is the sacrifice on today, the sacrifice that we give unto God out of our substance. Yes, it's time to offer our offerings and our tithes on this morning. Hallelujah. So we bless God on today. Hallelujah. We bless God on today. Praise God. We bless God on today. That we're on your screen, you're seeing that these are ways that you can give. But I wanted to share with you another thing that Solomon said in Proverbs. He said that there is one who withhold it more than he should but that man comes to poverty and there is one who gives as they should and God blesses so God has told us to bring our tithes and our offering into the storehouse that there would be meat in his house and that he would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive. And so on today, I want to just let you know that there is a song that we used to sing in the old church that said, you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. And you really can't. And so on today, I admonish you to continue to give unto the Lord. You know, a lot of us, our income levels have changed quite a bit. Mine has changed quite a bit. But I can say that God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful faithful to me. So when I give of my tithes and my offering out of all of my increase, I don't care if somebody give me $10, I'm going to give my tithe. I'm going to give my offering. And God has been faithful and has blessed me beyond measure. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know that I am having any type of financial 
uh, struggle because God has caused me to walk in favor and walk in abundance. So on today, I admonish you to go ahead and continue to bless the Lord with your tithes and offering. Uh, you can give to uh, the church through Cash App, dollar sign BGI Fellowship. You can text to give at 901-244-4688 online at bygodinspired.org and you can also give by cash or check as my pastor like to say with snail mail which is even slower now send that to p.o box 1042 p.o box 1042 south haven mississippi 38617 praise god Hallelujah. God is good. And let's continue to worship him. Come on, you can't beat God giving. Come on. The song said, you can't beat God's giving. No matter you try. Come on, somebody know this song with me. Just as sure as you are living, the Lord's in heaven on high come on the more you give come on y'all know it the more he gives to you yes just keep on giving because it's really true that you can't be God's giving no matter how you try. Amen. Praise God. Hello. All right. So before we pray, I'd just like to submit to you um, a word that God has been just sitting on my heart all week. And it comes from Genesis 50 in verse 20 when it says that you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And to put that into context for you, we're in the story of Joseph. And this man was sent into slavery by his own family. This man was in prison for a crime he did not commit and still remained faithful, still remained true to the true and living God and it just began to sit on upon my heart that in seasons of life where I may feel like I myself was in a prison will I still cling on to God's hand will I still believe in who he is so I just invite you to the altar and I want to pray over the season of your life that may feel like a dry land that may feel like a prison you may feel like you are stuck and not sure what God is even doing here. Or maybe it's a transition, or maybe it's a suffering that you carry. Let's lay it before God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover each and every person in this room under the sound of my voice, God. Will you be God to them? Will you show them your presence? Will you, will you show them your comfort in this season, oh God? Just as you were there with Joseph, God, may you be there with us, Father. We believe you to be true. 
We believe your word that is good and that is inerrant and that is faithful and that is assuring, Father. God, we lay down all of our insecurity. We lay down all of our depression and anxieties, Father. You are the God of our lives, God. We submit every area to you, God. How can we not submit it all to you when we've seen it in your word over and over again that you are near to us? How can we not submit these things on our heart when you have conquered it thousands and thousands of times before, God? So right now we ask you in this room, Father, to meet us, God, to meet us in our need, oh God, to meet us where we are, Jesus. We are believing you, God. It doesn't matter what it looks like around us. It doesn't matter what doctors say. It doesn't matter what finances may say, God, but you are the Lord of it all, God. We you are the Lord of it all, God. We are delighted to suffer with you, oh God. It is our joy to be attached to you, God. It is our joy to suffer in with Christ, God. There is nothing that you have not died for already. There is nothing too big, hallelujah, that you cannot conquer, God. You did it on the cross, and we do not stop there because you rose, God. You rose for our freedom, so we cannot go back to a dry and parched land empty handed God but we will stand on your word that is living water unto us God we are thirsty for you Jesus we are thirsty for a word we are thirsty for a touch and we know that when we open our mouths that you come that you run for your child in need like the prodigal son Jesus you run to us God you meet us God it doesn't matter how long that we've been apart it doesn't matter if we even let go of your hand but you will come to your children we cry out to you this morning we don't want to go back the same we don't want to go back in the same mindset but father we need you we need you God like the deer pants for water so our soul longs for you hallelujah as the deer pants for water so our soul longs for you God fill us up today God fill up your sons and daughters give us a new word over our lives father give us a new day oh God help us to see your glory even now even in the suffering help us to see your glory help us to stand firm on the rock of you God help us to have a firm foundation today God we we we, we in the name of Jesus we declare that there are no sturdy foundations in our life God you make us strong strong make us strong make us strong make us strong oh God make us strong Jesus we want to be faithful to you God we want to be true to you God you are our first love you are our first love you are our first love may we never forget that that you tend to us like no one ever can. You provide for us like no one ever can. You are our friend when our friends don't answer the phone. Hallelujah. You will always answer. You will always be there. There's never been a moment in our lives where you have not been there and consistent. We praise you for your consistency. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for the promises that you have spoken into each of us, God. We will see it in the land of the living. All that you have spoken, all that you have declared, all that you have whispered to us, we will see it in the land of the living. We will see financial freedom. We will see our family healed. We will see our, our fathers and mothers restored. We will see our children set free. We will see freedom in every area in every area of life god we will see healing in our body hallelujah we will see healing in our mind hallelujah because you have spoken it you have said it by his stripes we are healed in the name of jesus we stand firm god we stand unmoved and unshaken god we are an army we are an army of you god 
We submit to you, God. We submit to you, God. Lead us and charge us, God, so that we can see this thing through, God. Thank you for being the head of our lives, God. Thank you for leading us and directing us. Thank you for meeting us exactly where we are. <laughs> you are always on time. And I rebuke the devil <laughs> that tries to make us believe that he is late <laughs> or he is not here. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. We know our God is in the room. We serve an omnipresent God. He is here and he is here now fighting for his children. He just needs a yes. He needs a yes from you. So Father, we know that freedom is ours. And we know that even now, in the seasons that seem the most unsure, that you you are still working it for good <laughs> just like in genesis 50 20 god may our lives bring more to know you and love you may our suffering bring lives to know and love you may our darkest moment hallelujah be used for good may it be used for good may it be used to bring the lost souls to the light of christ Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for each man and woman under the sound of my voice. May you send a radical blessing to each of them as they are faithful to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to stay there for just a second. I want you to look around at the people next to you. And what I want you to understand no matter where you are, there are believers, folks who are walking with him, who love God with everything they have. Don't you ever think that you are alone. You're not alone. First of all, the Father says through the Son, I will never leave you or forsake you. But he knows that in our human condition, it's, imp it's important for us to have one another. As a church, a community, Many folks are isolated. I want you to value the importance of gathering. Don't forsake an assembly of believers because it's really for you. See, for, for me, in my house, I have my wife. It's a beautiful thing. But when I come here, I can look around and I see beautiful faces. And I want you to know that you have someone. You're not alone. Amen. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, speak to me and through me as the word which goes forth will penetrate the hearts of those who've come to receive. It's in your holy name. Amen. You all may be seated. Pastor Cheryl, can you bring my lavalier mic down just a little bit? It is good to be in the house of the Lord as we said at the very beginning. What an amazing prayer. It wasn't the words. It was the authenticity from the soul that speaks to our Father. The urgency in speaking to the Father. And I just want you to continue to practice that in your own lives. For our friends online, and, and I, I just got to say this, Pastor Taylor, uh, it, it's, it's amazing to me because uh, you, you sometimes, when you, you don't see people, you, you think that uh, the work that you're doing is not making an impact. And I just want to thank, thank those of you online who have reached out to me, those of you who, who are not officially uh, family members of BGI, but we are members of the body of Christ who have found time to watch us online from near and far. I want to thank you, and I want to, to tell you that BGI will meet you in the comfort of your personal space. And, and it's, it's just good. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. First of all, folks, I just uh, you know there's anything different around here anything different uh one of the things that i can i can share with you all before i get into the word is is um god tells me to keep building Amen. keep building and what i find is there's fun in building whatever that is 
whatever you have to do in your life, you, you got to keep building. You, you can't stop. You got to keep moving. Jesus says, I'm the truth, the way and the life. And the way as he's cleared the path is for you to now move in it and build whatever that is. I just hear the word build, build, build. And so in the natural for me as a pastor of a, a body of believers, uh, an apostle who, who has responsibility for folks, what you may see is building around here. You may see things added. And I just want you to understand what vision looks like. God will show you something. It'll be the finished work of what he's showing you, but then he'll back you up into it. And now you have to walk by faith, not by sight. And as you remember, maybe three years ago, when we are two years ago, or maybe three, two years when we moved into this facility, it was a blank slate. It was wide open. And we presented to you all a vision called Vision 2025 of what we wanted to do here. And I know it's hard for a lot of people to be visionary because, you know, if they don't have it all right there, it's like, oh, I don't think it's ever going to happen. And that's the problem with some of us is that when God shows it to us, we think if it's not happening in our lives right now, it's not going to happen. But you got to keep moving. you got to keep building. So I look around today. Piece by piece, building, building, whether it's a new screen, whether it's a wall, whether it's a dream center for our young adults, youth and young adults, classrooms. Uh, we didn't have all of that when we came in here. We didn't have all of that. And quite frankly, the building of, the, the building of things happened when nobody was here. When folks got scared and stayed home and didn't do anything, when giving went down for some people, people just totally forgot to give to God, and, but God kept building. He says, your, your extremity is God's opportunity. This is not the message. I just got to share this with somebody. Your extremity right now is God's opportunity. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. You may be going through something right now and you think God has forsaken you, but it's in the extremity that gives God the opportunity to show you you his strength in your weakness. I'm thankful today that God has given me the perseverance. It's not about me. This is pastor's appreciation month and I never ask folks for anything. So I'm going to appreciate myself today. I'm going to appreciate myself and all the other pastors, Pastor Cheryl, I mean, uh, Taylor, Pastor Cheryl, and, and all the other ministers who have been painstaking in their obedience to continue on when other folks have fallen off. So if I could just take a few minutes, I, I just want to appreciate myself. I want to appreciate myself. I want to thank God for giving me me to be able to do things even when I got discouraged up in here. I, I want to thank God for, for giving me the, the, the strength and the perseverance to push through uh, and love people when they didn't love me. I want to thank God for uh, showing me the importance of the principle of not being a stumbling block when everybody else is trying to throw rocks. It's a wonderful thing when you remain blameless before the Lord. You don't be a stumbling block. People will say things about you. They will throw stones at you. They will say you're the problem and you just remain blameless. Your conscience is clear. So I, I want you all to just do this exercise for me for just a second. This is gonna be part of the message. I want you to think about your house. How many of you have a, an apartment or a house? Raise your hand. In your apartment or your house, where you live, that is your safe haven. Can anybody come up in there? Can anybody just roll up in your house? Are you very selective about who you allow to come into your house? because that's your place of peace. That is your refuge. So God wants me to show you your mind. Your mind is a house. Your mind is a temple. So just like you do your physical house, you don't let everybody in there because you don't want them to disturb your peace at home. Why are we as believers letting people into our mental house? Everybody has access to your house. Everybody's thoughts have access to your mind. And it's so loud inside your mind. And God is saying today, on this day, he's going to clean that house. He's going to clean that house. Brothers and sisters, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. 
The word of God says that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Goes on to talk about spiritual wickedness in high places. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, he says, forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I want to, to look at what the scripture says. This is the apostle Paul talking to the church at Ephesus about where the real battle is. First and foremost, the battle is not with the person who sits next to you. The battle is not with the person that you've been fighting with in your own home. The battle is not with your husband or with your wife or your cousin or your children. The battle is not with the employer, your supervisor, the co-workers. I know you see them, but Paul is saying even to the church because the church is finding itself at a place now of fighting each other. The battle is not with what you see. The battle it's on the inside. And so today I want to preach from this subject, the inner turmoil, the inner turmoil. Brothers and sisters, many people will read Ephesians 6, 12, and they'll begin to say principalities and they'll look outwardly. They'll look at things. They'll look at politicians. They'll look at governors. They'll look at anybody else who doesn't look like them, whatever it is. And my battle and my beef is with you. God saying to us through the Apostle Paul that the battle has never been outward. The battle has been inward. Inward. We, we hear those words, and, and, and I didn't make that up, brothers and sisters. I want to really look at what Jesus did when he dealt with a demon-possessed man in a foreign land that he was walking in, and, and they couldn't contain him. The people couldn't contain this demon-possessed man. Uh, they tried to, to shackle him, uh, he, and he broke out of the shackles, and he would kind of roam in caves and areas, uh, uh, and, and Jesus came on the scene. And in Mark 5, verse 7 through 9, Mark 5, verse 7 through 9, with a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Brothers and sisters, he didn't command something outwardly to get away from the man. He commanded something inwardly to come out of the man. Jesus showed us that the battle is not with the man you see. The battle is not with the people you see. He dealt with the inner turmoil, behind the scenes, the other dimension. I said I wasn't going to use the word dimension, but the Lord said use it the inner dimension, the spirit world. Everything you think you should be fighting is not with what you see, it's in your mind. And the mind is real. He goes on and Jesus says, uh, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion because there are many of us inside, he didn't say outside, inside this man. Brothers and sisters, some of you have been fighting people because they're showing you some things, but you don't understand that what you see is not, you shouldn't see the person, you should see what is causing turmoil in their minds. Turmoil, the devil wants to take your mind. The battle has always been for your mind, so he gets you to look outwardly so you'll leave this open to him. The inner turmoil, what are you struggling with today? What, what are you dealing with? And, and listen, let, turn with me to Luke 17, verse 20 through 21. Uh, I'm reading from the K, uh, King James Version. This is Jesus. Uh, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, not with sight, brothers and sisters. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. Within you. Brothers and sisters, the devil is trying to distract 
your mind so your mind will be filled with chaos, confusion. Brothers and sisters, it, it keeps us in worry, uh, anxiousness, depression, sadness, offense. It's all a battle against the mind. That's why in the word of God, in the book of Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17, uh, we're supposed to put on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness to, to thwart the enemy's fiery darts. Some of y'all are looking for real darts in the natural. You're looking for someone to pick up a stone, but the darts are not physical darts. The darts you can't see, but if you walk with Christ, you will understand that the darts are an attack on your mind, trying to get you to forget who the Savior says you are in him. Who are you in Christ? Paul talked to the church at Rome in Romans 8, 17. He says, you're joint heirs with Christ, daughters and sons of God. You have an inheritance. You can reach for that inheritance right now, but some of you are reaching for worldly things and not dealing with the inner turmoil. Brothers and sisters, I want you to, to, to look at something in Proverbs 21, verse two, uh, it says, a person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. <sighs> Have you ever been in a situation that you you're saying the right thing to someone, but you're saying to yourself, I can't stand them. It's quiet in here. Folks act like they ain't never thought that, Pastor Taylor. All right, let, have you ever been in a situation where you've been around a bunch of folks and you know you got some folks who really don't care for you? You know this, but they're, they're saying to you, oh, you look nice, oh, you got nice this or that or whatever, and you're saying to yourself, they're about as fake as a $3 bill. Have you ever been there? Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to make sure you understand because, I, you know, preaching is really cool and the art of preaching is cool. You know, the, 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 the hooping is cool at times, but if you don't get an understanding, what is all of that? Some folks think that the style of how we teach is not good enough because we're not doing the things that make them feel good. But I don't want you to leave out of here a hostage to this world and easily attacked by the darts you don't see. So today, I want you to understand something, that, that the inner turmoil is in our mind, and the mind is real. The things that we think about ourselves, sometimes we can be a little obnoxious in our minds, sometimes we can be a little chaotic in our minds, sometimes we can doubt in our minds, and we don't believe that we have what we need to do whatever God has given us to do. We may never speak it, but we're thinking it. And the word of God says, as a person thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking today? Do you, do you think that you don't have a hope in the future? Can I be transparent with you all for just a second? Some of y'all may look at me and you'll say, you know, Pastor Vince, Apostle Vince, you, you're doing well. You, you have a great career. You have been successful and you have been able to really increase the footprint of the organization you lead on in the Memphis area. You make a lot of money. Your daughter is doing wonderful. You have a beautiful wife. You guys are just great. But, but can I just be real with y'all? Sometimes we don't even see what other people see because we're dealing with an inner turmoil in our minds of how we see ourselves. And unless you get to a place in your life where you see yourself the way the Savior sees you, you'll never see just how good the Savior has been to you. I've struggled, discouragement, hopeless. I've struggled with bouts of intermittent depression, but I never stayed there. I want to be transparent with you. The battle has always been for the mind. And as I've shared with believers many times before, I've always said that these times would come. But whatever you do, when you feel anxious, when you feel depressed, don't make a decision in that feeling. And don't stay there too long. 
The battle has been for your mind because if you know anything about the mind, the mind controls every part of your body. Y'all give the devil, devil a whole lot of credit sometimes and you shouldn't really be doing that because it's really our choices. That is our demise. Well, the devil is trying to do this to me. No, 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 you're doing it to yourself because you've chosen to do something that will cause you harm. The, the word of God tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, verse four and five, for our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Cast down every imagination. He didn't say cast down every person you see. He says cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. In other words, Christ gives us the strength to cast down those thoughts that don't represent the kingdom of heaven that's in us. The battle, the inner turmoil, is within us. Some of you are estranged from family members, friends of something they said. You think your beef is with the person you see, but the true beef is with your mind. See, Paul tells us in Romans 14 that we need to make sure that we're convinced in our own minds of what we believe. And many times, many times, believers are in disputable things. They're disputing all kinds of things because you're unsure of it yourself and you're debating people to get them to believe something you're unsure of. But when you are convinced in your own mind of what the Savior has given you, what he says about you, he's going to give you a hope in the future. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're beautiful. You're not ugly. You are unique. You have your own assignment. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. You keep your mental real estate on lockdown. You put the borders up around your mental real estate. For me, I have four rooms in my head and those four rooms are reserved for the father son holy spirit and my family anybody else can't get in here so when people are talking to me guess what it's not coming in my mind to stay there i'm giving them to the father brothers and sisters some of you are allowing all kind of people to sleep with you it's quiet I know someone saying, how, 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 what do you talk, Pastor, you didn't about lost your mind. No, I found my mind. <sighs> when you bring everybody's issues into your head and you go to bed with them, they're sleeping with you. Other people's issues become your burden. And you can't even focus on yourself because everything everybody brings to you, you are now wrestling with it. When I think about that demon-possessed man, shrieked when he saw Jesus. And Jesus said, come out of this man. Then he asked him, who are you? We're legion for we are many. Some of you are dealing with so many demons in your mind, you don't even know it. You, you, you're making assumptions about what other people think about you and they ain't even thinking about you. You're worried about what they may say about you because of an issue you might have tripped in. They're not even thinking about you. You have formulated all these thoughts inside your mind of what other people are thinking, but really it's the inner turmoil. It's yourself. It's how you see yourself. And God is saying, Release those demons out of your mind. Release them. Release them. Only hear my voice. Don't make assumptions about other people. Don't make assumptions of why they did something. Maya Angelou said, when a person shows you who you are, they are the first time you believe them. Don't try to figure out what's going on in somebody's mind. You are not a cat trying to chase the tail. If somebody shows you something at that moment, that's who they are. Don't try to go on this chase. Okay, well, they showed me that, but I know, and you, you then now begin to go into their minds and try to figure out what's going on with them. And now you're on a zigzag chase, but you're chasing the demon that wants you not to focus on the greater that's in you, the kingdom of heaven that gives you the power to overcome the demons. Brothers and sisters, a lot of folks don't talk about demons. 
They don't, they don't, they don't. They just want to feel good. But I'm here today to tell you that God says it's time to put up the borders. It's time to build that wall. Build that wall. And I seen, let me tell you when I said build that wall, the demons started dealing with some folks. They started making some assumptions. He must be for such and such part. Let me tell you something. I cast that demon down in the name of Jesus. Build that wall. Build those walls around the border. Don't let people in to your mental real estate. They don't belong there. The only one who belongs there is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then you can have your family there, but some folks you still got to kick out of that place. And when the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest inside your house, there will be an inner peace because you're convinced in your own mind that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. It starts from the inside and then it comes out. Brothers and sisters, what are you battling with today? The inner person, the inner person is noisy, chaotic, shifty, loud and obnoxious at times, sad, angry, offended, disappointed all at the same time, layers on top of layers of stuff that keeps you going on, uh, it keeps you going and you, and you take it with you to sleep. You're not resting in the Savior. The Lord is Sabbath. That's a rest. You're trying to rest in all of the things that's going on in your mind and you don't get any true rest. Brothers and sisters, you know how we try to escape our mental trauma? We, we try to do things that make us feel good. How many of y'all like going shopping? <laughs> I heard a couple of claps there, right? Sometimes there's so many things that are weighing heavy on our minds because the mind is the heart of the soul that we don't deal with what's weighing heavy on us, we want to escape it. And then what we do is in that moment, we go make some choices to spend money that sometimes we don't have to make ourselves feel good as if that thing's gonna go away. But until you deal with the thing that's up here, you'll still have the same feeling. Some people use drugs to escape their mental trauma. Some people use food. Some people use all kind of things. See, the wages of sin, death. And what happens when the enemy has fired those darts at your mind and you don't understand anything about the inner turmoil, you'll turn to physical things to give you relief. And once the newness of the physical thing has subsided, you still are in the same mental condition. What do you see going on today, brothers and sisters? And you see a lot of people seeming to lose their minds. They're losing their minds. Uh, they're doing things and it's becoming more and more, um, you see it regular. You're seeing it on the news. You're hearing about it through social media and, and you're seeing it. What's happening is folks are not anchored in the Savior. They don't, they're not convinced in their own minds. When you're not convinced of who the Savior says you are, you will look to the world to tell you who you are. And when the world doesn't tell you who you think you are, you'll lose your mind trying to get them to see you. That's what's going on, brothers and sisters. And then in Matthew 11, verse 29, uh, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Let me translate that for you. I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest in your souls. Some of you are taking on too much. How many of you love social media? Okay, maybe I shouldn't ask the question that way. How many of you are on social media? How many of you have a Facebook, Instagram, and how many of you probably look at that maybe one or two hours a day? Some of you, it's part of your job. Well, not really. It's not really part of your job to read what everybody's saying. It may be part of your job to put things out there. Have you ever been in a crowded room and you're insecure about yourself and you think everybody's thinking horrible things about you because you're not securing yourself? 
Can you imagine? I, I can just imagine right now what you all might be thinking as I'm preaching. I'm so glad I can't hear your thoughts. Because if I heard everything you're thinking right now, I might not be able to focus on what God has given me right now. So why is it that we find ourselves gravitated to social media to read everybody's thoughts? First thing you go to in the morning when you wake up, you don't go to the word, you go to Facebook or Instagram, TikTok. You don't spend any time with the Lord. You, 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 you say you have the Lord, the Lord knows my heart, and you go and you start to look at what other people are doing. Or you posted something and you just want to see who's commented on what you said. You're consumed with other people's thoughts. You're consumed with letting people come into your mental, your house and reside there. And here's what happens. You begin to compare yourself with other people. You begin to think that you're not adequate. You look at what somebody else is doing and you feel horrible about what God is doing in your life. You forget that what God has for you is for you. Whatever lane he's uh, created for you, that's your lane. God is such a big God that he's created enough for all of us to have, but we continue to compare because of what we're seeing on social media because we've let it into our thoughts and now we're depressed press because somebody did a snapshot of them smiling, but you didn't see the other video when they were sad all day long. Your whole identity is being shaped by how other people think. Folks are worried about a chip and a vaccine. And I'm not mocking nobody. They have a right to think that. They can be convinced in their own minds, and that's fine. As long as they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, I love you. I love you. I'm not going to dispute you on what a vaccine does or doesn't do. But the chip is not in the vaccine. The chip is in this phone. How many of you cannot go one day without this? How many of you take it everywhere you go? It tracks everywhere you go. Even when you think you turned the location thing off, GPS is still on your phone. It knows where you are. You're thinking something, a vaccine has a chip in it, but the true thing that has a chip is a thing you can't live without. How many of you have to have this thing on all the time? And, and you're reading emails and people can get gain access to you. Brothers and sisters, I don't care what type of job you have, no one needs 24 hour access to your mind. There's gotta be a time when you shut it down. The inner turmoil, you're dealing with an inner turmoil because you thought the battle was with a principality that was outward, but the true battle is inner. Do you know who you are today? I got three points and we're going to get out of here. I want you to tweet this out. Point one, protect your inner peace. Protect your inner peace. Some of you have not done a good job of protecting your inner peace. I did something yesterday that secured my inner peace. I deleted Facebook, Instagram off my phone. The only time I'll access it is on my laptop when I'm doing work. It doesn't need access to my mind all day long. Protect your inner peace. Brothers and sisters, Proverbs 4, 23 to 27, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Protect your inner peace. The older we get, I'm 50 years old. I'm happy going to work and coming home and going in my backyard and dealing with my garden. I love going to do things with my wife, going out to eat, getting with friends and family who have the same value system, who believe in the sanctity of marriage, who believe in building up one another and advancing the kingdom message in the earth. Those are the sort of folks I want to be around. 
I don't want to be around petty people. I don't want to be around people who gossip. I don't want to be around people who don't really believe in themselves, uh, don't believe what God says. They say they're Christians. They say they love God, but all they're doing is entertaining every other thing that is burdening their minds, and they're not walking in the newness that Christ gives us every day. I'm not wanting to walk with you. I, I, I don't want to. I, I, don't, you don't, I don't want to give you access to my mind. And so here's the beauty of church. Some folks are fretting over the fact that why haven't they all come back yet? Why aren't the seats full? And it's not just at this house, it's at many other houses. I know this, I talk to pastors. But when you have an inner peace, you, it's rest. I don't have to deal with some of them demons. I'm not calling everybody demons, but I'm just gonna be real with you. Everybody got a problem. Everybody think the pastor can solve them. And listen, I'm not your savior. Jesus saved me and I'm pointing you to him. I'm an apostle, I will do what I can to point you in the right direction, give you what you need, but ultimately you have to believe what Christ says about you. Protect your inner peace, brothers and sisters, protect your inner peace. Point two, build a wall at your mental borders. Build that wall, build that wall, build that wall. Build it, build it, build it and build it high, real high, and don't let them come in. When you see somebody coming in, get out in the name of Jesus. When that thought comes in and tells you you're too fat or you're too skinny or you're too dark or you're too light or you're this or you're that, any thought that comes in that exalts itself against who God says his knowledge, cast that thing down. Take it out, take it out, because when you remove it from your mind, that inner peace will allow you to flow in such a wonderful way. Nothing anyone says to you, nothing anyone says about you will really matter because it's what God says about you. Final point, brothers and sisters, clean your inner self every day. Pray, repent, reset. Clean your inner house every day, your inner self. Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Psalms 51, 10 through 12 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Protect your peace, build those walls around that mental border, and clean our inner selves every day. Take that with you. When you leave here today, everything that was burdening your mind down, God says, leave it with him. Those of you online, I'm speaking to you. You're so worried about everybody else's stuff. Everybody else's stuff, they bring it to you and, and it becomes your burden. Don't you know that when you're burdened, when things that really are not of your concern, your health deteriorates? And until you get a handle on that situation, it will continue to come to you. Protect your inner peace protect your inner peace. That's what I love about the Savior. He had an inner peace. He was convinced in his own mind of who he is. He was able to navigate a wicked world that at every turn was trying to trap him. He was always a thousand steps ahead of the Pharisees who tried to trip him up because he had an inner peace. And he wants to be your peace today. Are you truly ready to submit completely to him because until you truly submit completely to him you will be wrestling with the demons in your mind that won't give you rest Jesus says my yoke is easy my burden is light brothers and sisters this is that moment for the believers at this moment this prayer is for you and then I'm gonna pray for the unbelievers. What have you been wrestling with? 
What is the inner turmoil? God wants to be your peace. He wants to bring calm to the inner storm. Pray with me. Lord, create in me a clean spirit. Renew my mind. Help me to build that wall around my mental borders. Clean my mental house up. Evict those demons that try to tell me I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm too ugly, I'm too skinny, I don't have enough money, I'm poor, I don't have this or that, I'm not good enough, I'll never be anything. Evict those demons in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to deal with the worry that tries to creep in. Give me the strength to tell people Seek you, not me. Give me the wisdom to put on my headset so I don't have to hear the noise that's all around me. Lord, help me to maintain my peace. I love you, Lord. And I understand that the battle is not outward. The battle is inward. Grow me an understanding in that area. Show me what you've shown, Apostle Vince, so that I can move with a boldness, but a peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, give me my peace, Lord. Evict all those things that don't need to be in my mind. I want only you, Lord. I want clarity in my thoughts. I don't want anxiety. I don't want depression. I don't want fear. Fear has no home in my mind. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. For those of you who feel like you're not saved, you know you're not saved. If you were to die today, you don't know where you would spend your eternity. This is the moment for you to make sure you have the insurance that is like, unlike any other insurance you can have. If you wanna be saved, repeat after me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised from the dead three days later with all power. I invite you inside, 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 in my heart to change me from the inside out. Bring peace to the turmoil that's been on the inside. Lord, I give you full permission right now in your holy name, amen. If you believe what you just said, that he is the son of God, you're on the right path. Make sure that you get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And keep on this road. The enemy is gonna to attempt to fire even more darts at your mind, but no, God got you, amen? Amen. Amen. What a powerful message and such for such a time as this. And just right now, I think we still need to reflect on God's faithfulness to us. Because even when the inner turmoil comes, even when we tend to fall away, God is still faithful to us. Have you ever looked back over your life and remember a time when it looked like everything was going wrong and yet God sustained you in the midst of it all. I can recall times as a pastor, how I was being eaten up on the inside because I was so worried about the problems in the congregation, 
the problems that were going on in the choir. That when I went to bed at night, I didn't go to sleep at night. So it got to a point where every time I tried to do something, I had to pray that God gave me strength just so I can get out of the bed. God give me strength just so I can go to my job every day because I was so burdened on the inside that the verses that should have resonated with me, cast your cares on him because he cares for you, it didn't come to me. That I, I should have remembered the verse, uh, like Psalm 119, verse 90, it says that God's faithfulness endures to a thousand generations. And yet I was so concerned about everything on the outside, taking up all of that residence on the inside, that my relationship with God was suffering. And I'll tell you a secret about pastors. Even when we're suffering, God will still use us to teach a word. And here we are suffering ourselves and we're asking God, how can you still use me like this? And you know that I'm suffering. How do you keep touching me over and over again, giving me a word for your people and God, I need a word for me. And then you come across a teaching such as this. When you realize that the powers and the principalities that we fight against, we're fighting them on the inside. And once God breaks the chains, once he frees us, once he convinces us in our own mind of who he is and who we are to him, then that inner turmoil starts to die down. Jesus said in John 16 and verse 23, he said, I've said these things, that in you, that in me you might have peace. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. All of us should know that we are the overcomers of the world. God is faithful. Thank you, Pastor V, for just giving us a timely message a message that each of us can write on our hearts and take with us because God is still faithful. For everyone that's inside and everyone that's online, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, for all ages, young and the young at heart, do want to make you aware that we do have Bible class every Wednesday starting at 630. And we do have service here every Sunday starting at 10.30. When God lays on your heart that you need a word from him, I know you can find it at By God Inspired Fellowship. We are a family of believers, and this is your home. Amen. At this time, let us close out with a prayer. Everyone, let's stand. As we prepare to go down from this place, Let's just focus on God, give all God cares to him, and let's continue to be faithful to him as he is faithful to us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you just to thank you. And God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for keeping us when we couldn't keep ourselves. We thank you, God, that you have given us a teaching that can expose the inner turmoil that we have and know that we can lean and depend on you. And God, you are faithful to a thousand generations. You are faithful to forgive us when we do wrong. You are faithful to heal us when we need a healing. God, you are faithful to deliver us out of all of our situations. God, you are faithful to restore families. You are faithful to build up churches. God, you are faithful. And I pray right now, God, that a special anointing still falls on Apostle V and the McCaskill family. Continue to use them as that beacon of light. But then, God, let your light so shine through all of us that are gathered together in the church, for all of us that are gathered online, for all of us that will watch it in replay. God, let your light so shine through us 
that everyone will see you when they see us walking through. But then God, give us the strength to evict out every thought that is not of you. To evict out every thought that tells us we're not who you called us to be. And God, we thank you for it now. God, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and the victory is already yours. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all in Jesus' name. Just to dwell. 